What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello, everybody. My name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Are you looking for a great gift idea for somebody on your shopping list? Today, we will be looking at the 1976 Chevrolet Impala Caprice by AMT Ertl. Now this model kit is on loan from my good friend James. However, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. You'll be grinning like a fool and watching out for Daddy Cool in this 76 Chevy Caprice, which of course is the upscale version of the 76 Chevy Impala, offering more cushy and plush riding experience for the driver. So this kit again is loaned to me by my good friend James, and it came out in the late 2000s here under RC2. This Impala is a skill level 2 kit, which of course is for the moderate model builder. Ages 10 and up requires glue and paint. And on this side of the box, you can see how the model builder at AMT built the kit, with of course our Chevy 350 under there, the nice interior, and this kit also includes a boat trailer. And now we can take the lid off this 1976 Chevy Behemoth and see inside and again, we've got the nice instruction sheet, Chevy Caprice with trailer. Now, there may be some decals somewhere in here, I'm not too sure, but there's the beginning of our gray plastic components. I do believe James had a look at this one. There's our chrome there, and then undercarriage bits and hood, interior, the steering wheel, the Caprice body looking nice big and humongous. Then our tires there, the under pan, seats, oops, a piece of chrome that popped out the side, engine block, and yes indeed there are the decals. Our instruction sheet is the giant fold-out style and we can take a look at each panel page by page. You do get a nice paint call-out listing all the color you still need to build this model. Panel 1 shows our engine going together and here we have our 350 Chevy motor with the engine and transmission as one piece. It does look like we have an automatic in here, so you glue up the left and right hand sides. There we have our plated oil pan, as well as the starter motor, front engine cover, cylinder heads, and intake manifold with distributor at the back. Panel 1B shows our completion of our engine with the chrome valve covers and chrome air cleaner being glued down onto the four barrel carburetor, as well as our exhaust manifolds, our pulley, fan, and alternator. Here we have our chassis, and it looks like the one piece promotional style, much like the 1970 Chevy Impella, actually. And then here we have our rear differential, drive shaft, and the exhaust pipes with mufflers gluing down in here. Well, it's not quite the 70 Impala because this one does have the inclusion of the catalytic converter, which is correct for 76. We have an exhaust crossover pipe as well, and our engine will glue in up underneath. Here we also have the optional trailer hitch part, which can be glued onto the back. And here we have the very classy, these are your father's hubcaps, being glued into the tire, as well as onto the back wheel back. This is a very simple chassis to complete, as you can see. You do have metal axles, which will connect your wheels together, both front and rear. We have a radiator support wall with the radiator. There's a battery and our upper radiator hose. Here we have the nice Chevy interior. It is one big bucket with the bench seat molded in the back, as well as the side door panels and our carpet. Here we have the front bench seat dropping into place, steering wheel, and a dashboard. Panel 4 shows the assembly of all our minor components in here. You can see the Impala body, firewall glues up from underneath, then we have our windshield and rear window and side glass molded as one piece with the bridge in between, rear tail lights, the interior popping into place, and the whole chassis underpan as well. Panel 5 shows our hood going on, as well as our front grille and bumper. And then for the trailer, you can add on these optional uh, truck style mirrors. 
Out back, we have our 1976 license plate shroud going into the back of the car, as well as our rear bumper. And if you don't want it to say 1976 back here, you can cover that up with the license plate decal, although I would scrape off the letters and numbers in the back. Now I did notice in the parts that most of the trailer components are missing out of this kit, so I do think James pirated the trailer out for his own use. However, I did see that the rear wheels are still in there, for whatever reason. But here's how it all goes together. So you've got your wheels, your tires, and then this lock, as well as the wheel back, and our springs. So that goes together first, and then the wheels will pop on. Then the frame for our trailer, with all the license plates and rear taillights, as well as the hitch and the wheel in the front. And finally, you add in the ramps, and it says not to cement, so they must tilt up to get your car off. Here we have our 76 Chevrolet Impala Caprice body. And as you can see, it is quite a long beastie. The door handles and side trim are all molded in place, as well as the emblems up front and up here on the pillar. And then in the back, you've got those nice Chevy taillights of that era. You can see where the license plate shroud goes in, as well as the rear bumper. Side marker lights again, looking big. There are some fender skirts molded in place on here, as well as side marker lights up in the front. And from the front, it looks pretty accurate. The only thing you need to do is take your hobby blade and remove this brace right in the front. Now our undercarriage displays signs of a promotional model because here we have the sunken holes, which would be perfect for screw mounts for your body. And then we've got the covered over holes up front. So now we kind of get an understanding of what this car is. But even though it's a promo or sort of a modified promo, it still looks quite nice underneath. All the detail is in place. You just need to basically cover those over and, you know, fill out your gas tank a little bit. If you turn it upside down here, it does have a mark saying 1976 Chevrolet used under license right in there. And again, mold marks are not too bad under here. Maybe a little bit of stuff up in those wheel wells. But again, not too bad considering what this is. Here we have the interior tub. And again, we have a steering wheel in a plastic bag. And that's so that you won't bend the console while it's in shipping or packaging. But again, you can see the nice seat detail in the back. This is very typical of what you would see in a 70s Chevrolet product, especially the big ones. We do have sink marks in the carpet, which unfortunately, not too many of them are being covered by the seat. In fact, only one. <laughs> Then we have the automatic up here for our pedals. And if we turn it over, of course, there's no mold marks. It's nice and smooth under there. I do like this crazy curvature of the rear windows for these 70s Impalas. And our steering wheel is very much like what you would see in the big GM cars. So again, AMT did a good job of this. Here we have all the gray components to build up our 76 Chevrolet. And unfortunately, there's none of the trailer components in here to review. But overall, you can see the basic simplicity of this model kit. It will be a good one for beginner modelers to start on. There's our bench seat, our firewall, and our radiator support with the radiator molded in place. Engine components, which are quite basic. And then we've got our hood and our dashboard as well as the whole rear differential assembly with exhaust pipes molded in place and trailer hitch, as well as those side mirrors for our trailer and our wheel backs over here. Now I won't bring too much up into the camera because there's not really too much to bring up into the camera. <laughs> However, you can see the nice detailing on that bench seat, just like the real Chevy. It is molded as one piece and not too bad. There's actually not really any sink marks in here. Just maybe a slight dimple up in the back of the headrest, as you can hopefully see there. But nothing to really be too worried about. So I just put the seat to the side. The hood looks really nice. It's got the air vents into the back here. This one would have covered over the windshield wipers, which of course was a feature in the 70s. 
Our dashboard looks really nice in there. You can listen to Detroit Rock City off the radio, or maybe Beth for something a little more cultured. Uh, again, underneath, you do have the proper mesh in there. The fireproof blanket, I should say. There are mold marks in the four corners of that cross, but nothing you couldn't really get rid of. Engine looks nice. Automatic transmission looks good on it too, as well as the battery. So again, very nice detail for a basic model car. And here's our chrome for our car. And again, you can see the nice hubcaps on here, the full scale Chevy, the Impala grill or Caprice grill, front bumper and rear bumper, chrome air cleaner and all the engine components. This could also be a Chevy 454, but I'm not totally sure if they got rid of that in 76 or not. But anyway, overall, this is quite a neat looking bunch of chrome. You know, I had a thought here. Perhaps James didn't get the trailer after all, because there's a whole bunch of chrome missing out of here. Unless he clipped it off. We'll have to, uh, if James, if you're out there, leave a comment in the description below. Did you build the trailer or did this thing not have one? Because RC2 was also noted as displaying something on the side of the box and actually not having it in the kit, as we saw on the 74 Plymouth GTX. Anyway, on the back you can see again its promotional roots. Lots of long pins on the back of the grill, just so you can slip them into place in through the body through little holes. But overall, I mean, this is quite nicely detailed and it should look good on your shelf once you complete the car. Next up we have our clear glass components. There's our front windshield as well as the bridges that connect it to the back side glass and rear window. You could always saw these out and uh, make it look a lot nicer when you turn the car upside down and view in through the top windows. Here we have our red taillight lenses and these are quite nice because there is a little bit of a grill back here. A nice mesh which should look like the correct Chevy Impala taillights from the back of the car. Here we have the tires for this kit and I'm not sure if there's supposed to actually be six of them because two of them would be for the trailer. However, what we do have here is Goodyear Polyglass GTs for the front, and they are a bit smaller. There's a nice tread pattern on them here, as you can see. Raised letters, of course. And then we have these other Goodyear Polyglass tires with a different type of tread and a higher profile compared to the GT tires, as we can see. So really, which ones are for the Impala, which ones are for the trailer? I would say that these ones are for the Impala because it's such a big car, but again, hard to know. Uh, James, you need two more of those. Last but not least, we have our decal sheet, which just consists of three license plate decals, Pennsylvania Classy, West Virginia 76 Chevy, and a Kansas H376 license plate, which I do believe might be a diplomat style plate, but that's all we have. And that completes our groovy look at the 1976 Chevrolet Caprice, the perfect disco machine. And if you've built this thing in the past, we want to see your pictures on our Facebook page. And I'll leave the link for that in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that unboxing video where I got to show you the 1976 Chevrolet Caprice by AMT Ertl. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building!